Welcome to this episode of our program Daily Debate. As usual, we will be discussing important uh, topics tonight. We'll be focusing on, uh, in two segments on two topics. First, the arrival of President Abdel Fattah al-Sisi to Saudi Arabia, where he is participating in the 32nd uh, session of the uh, Arab uh, summit that is being held in Jeddah. Part of uh, Egypt's keenness to strengthen joint Arab action towards many of the uh, crises and challenges that are facing the whole region. Uh, the uh, spokesman or the presidential spokesman, Councillor Ahmed Fahmi, has, uh, has said that the Jeddah summit aims to promote consultation and coordination among the Arab states on efforts to preserve the security and stability of the region and to promote Arab uh, interests, particularly in light of the successive changes and escalating crises at the international and regional arenas. We'll be focusing on uh, this in our first segment, but before we delve into our discussion, let's first have a quick look on this report and we'll come back for more discussion. Foreign Ministers held a preparatory meeting in Jeddah on Wednesday ahead of the 32nd Arab Summit on Friday, welcoming Syria back into the Arab fold and reaffirming the centrality of the Palestinian coast to the pan-Arab agenda. Saudi Arabia assumed the presidency of the upcoming Arab Summit from Algeria during the meeting. The foreign ministers reviewed a draft agenda for the summit which brings together the heads of Arab states to discuss a number of issues pertinent to a pan-Arab agenda. The heads of Arab states are expected to discuss the ongoing mediation efforts to end the conflict in Sudan and the latest developments in the Arab-Israeli conflict including serious Israeli violations in Jerusalem among other issues. The preparatory ministerial meeting was attended Syrian Foreign Minister Faisal Meqdad and Information Minister Boutrous Halak. It is the first such participation of a Syrian delegation in a high-level Arab Foreign Minister's meeting after the Arab League welcomed Syria back into the Arab fold on the 7th of May, ending a 12-year suspension. Speaking in the ministerial meeting, Saudi Arabia's Foreign Minister Prince Faisal bin Farhan also welcomed Syria's return to the Arab fold and called for cooperation between Arab countries to achieve security, stability and economic prosperity. Later, in a separate meeting, the contact group tasked by the Arab League AL with finding a peaceful resolution for the conflict in Sudan stressed in its first meeting on the necessity of reaching an immediate and sustainable ceasefire in the country to preserve the capabilities of the Sudanese people and their national institutions. The contact group meeting held on Wednesday in Jeddah was attended by the Foreign Minister Sameh Shukri, the Foreign Minister of Saudi Arabia Faisal bin Farhan and the Secretary General of the Arab League Ahmed Abu Ghid. The Sudan contact group, which was formed on the 7th of May, per a resolution by the Arab League, compromises Egypt, Saudi Arabia and the Secretary General of the Arab League. In a statement after the meeting, the contact group stressed the importance of dealing with the Sudanese crisis as an internal issue and warned against outside interference. The statement also stressed the centrality of neighboring countries' role and the Arab League's contact group in resolving the crisis. The contact group also affirmed in the statement its support for the Jeddah Humanitarian Declaration Agreement to protect civilians, facilitate humanitarian relief work to meet urgent needs. The group members commanded in their statement the efforts of several Arab countries, including Egypt, in alleviating the suffering of the brotherly Sudanese people. They also vowed that the group would continue all efforts with all the Sudanese sides in coordination with regional and international partners to resolve the crisis. 
they also called on the international community to provide urgent humanitarian and medical aid to the Sudanese people. Right, welcome back and uh, back to our uh, episode or our first segment of the episode and we have with us to highlight the issue His Excellency Ambassador Gamal Bayoumi, former Assistant Foreign Minister. Good evening to you, Your Excellency. Good evening, how are you? I'm fine, thank you so much. And we're speaking about this year's Arab Summit that is being held in Jeddah and uh, how important it is in face of the uh, current international and uh, regional uh, crises and, and challenges? Yes, uh, it is coming in a serious time, whether internationally or regionally. We have worries on the international uh, dimension. We have uh, the results of uh, the corona epidemic. We have uh, still uh, facing the challenge of the Ukrainian war, and it affects us economically, it affects the whole world. And we are trying to be a sort of good mediator in this. The Egyptian foreign minister and the foreign ministry played a role to uh, send messages from the United States to the Russians. Now we are trying to help to stop this silly war. It has no meaning at all. And uh, we, we also try to uh, see its effects on our uh, cereal supplies. And there is a sort of uh, recommendation from the Arab Parliament lately in order to expand our possibility to produce more food. We have a huge food gap in the Arab world. While we have country in the size of Sudan, it can feed us if Sudan is not in a civil war also. Indeed. Indeed. On the level of the uh, regional problems, we have uh, several problems. We have Syria, we have Lebanon, we have uh, uh, Libya, we have the, the Yemenese war, and now we have the Sudan, which is the most complicated issue in our Arab world. And above all, of course, and at the beginning, we are still dealing with the Palestinian question, mm -hmm. where we are facing a real aggression against our Palestinian brothers. So then the last file, uh, or the last level, is the bilateral one. This is a little bit uh, uh, promising because we have uh, agreed on several agreements in the economic field, whether it is the Arab large free trade area. Now we are... Uh, exchanging commodities uh, exempted from any custom duties or any barriers. We have a good uh, uh, treatment, treaty concerning uh, investment, encouraging investment and protect Arab investment in the Arab world. We have made uh, a sort of uh, development in the area of services. We have a lot of services which is uh, free between the Arab countries. Mm -hmm. So we want to make sure that our trade will be going much better, that our investment will be attracting uh, Arab investors in our countries. And this also a sort of uh, opportunity and a challenge because we have to make the life of an investor, whether Egyptians living abroad or Arabs or uh, uh, Europeans, the Americans, Chinese, name it, to, to be uh, more optimistic and more easier to, to, to deal with our bureaucracy, mm -hmm. with our banking system. Yes, so, uh, yes, we have definitely. challenges, we have opportunities also during this session. Indeed. And Egypt has a lot to say, particularly after the meeting of President Abdel Hassisi, or presiding over the highest or the Supreme Council for Investment and the latest decisions that were taken, but that is not our topic tonight. If I may ask you about the Syrian uh, return to the Arab world, uh, the rise of Iraq, and how does this reflect uh, uh, an Arab uh, ability 
to have a kind of Arab Arab solution in face of the Arab uh, uh, problems and how does this reflect on the joint Arab work? We, we have made a good, we, we made a good step concerning Syria by inviting the Syrian president to take his place in this summit and I hope that this will encourage the Syrian government in order to find a solution among the different Syrian, Syrian uh, uh, parties and the Syrian tribes. Because after all, we, we, we still have a challenge in Syria that uh, they are divided, they are fighting each other. Syria is occupied in its north by the Turkish uh, army. It has uh, foreign troops, whether the Israeli occupying the Golan or the Americans or the French, or, uh, many foreign troops are uh, playing its role in uh, Syria. So, but but the, 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 the solution should be coming from the Syrians themselves. Indeed. There, there isn't a sort of conspiracy or what we uh, sometimes imagine. It is a Syrian, Syrian, serious problem. They have to solve it among them. And I think with uh, the help of main Arab countries like Egypt or Saudi Arabia, we can uh, help them to come to reason and to come under one country and one flag. Right. Same thing about Sudan, because Sudan also is a very complicated problem. Indeed. Indeed, Sudan needs all efforts to, to, to come back to the Arab world and to stop uh, this um, unwanted at all conflict at this very particular time. If we speak uh, uh, about the importance of the Arab unity and solidarity towards all the challenges that are facing uh, the region, the international and the uh, regional ones, and uh, particularly what do the Arab nations aspire for? As a matter of fact, uh, we, we relatively are in a good situation among the Arabs themselves. After all, 22 countries, more than 400 million inhabitants, talking the same language. And I think that this is more strong than the, the, the one currency, like the euro or something like that. Uh, and it makes our life uh, easier. And whenever I ask an investor in the Gulf, why do you come to Egypt? Because we talk the same language. You can leave our families in, in Cairo. Uh, living uh, normally without any interruption. They are not have this sort of welcoming in Europe, for instance. So I think we have many privileges as Arabs, but we have to build on it. We have to make our trade much more than that by investment, because our investment is going to services, to housing, to uh, hotel services, but we, we neglect the industrial development, we neglect the agriculture also, and we have a food gap, huge food gap, while we have the possibility of countries like Sudan or Iraq or Syria or uh, Egypt, all of them can expand their areas to pr produce more and more agricultural products. And uh, as you will see in the last few weeks, we are uh, expanding our agriculture uh, area, and I think this will uh, bring very good results to our economy. Let yeah. us hope that we can do this in the whole Arab world. So the economic file is uh, relatively in a good shape and we hope that we can make it even better. Yes, indeed, indeed. And uh, this is what the Arab nations aspire for. And definitely we need all the Arab uh, uh, efforts all together in order to be able to really uh, confront our uh, challenges. Your Excellency Ambassador Gamal Bayoumi, former Assistant Foreign Minister, thank you so much for being with us and for your input here. Now we go to our second segment and President Abdel Fattah al-Sisi has uh, met uh, earlier this week with the Prime Minister and a number of ministers and high-ranking officials to follow up with the ongoing efforts to develop Egypt's means to benefit from its mineral wealth.
Mainly the tantalum, the president gave directives to optimally manage and use Egypt's mineral wealth and raw materials and stressed the importance of adopting the best methods of modern management and governance as well as uh, uh, advanced technological techniques so as to maximize the added value of Egypt's mineral wealth and contribute to the strengthening of the state's industrial plan and the national economy. This is what we will be uh, focusing in our second uh, segment. Before we delve our, um, into discussion, let's have this quick report and President Sisi leads meeting to discuss developing of the tantalum ore mining. Let's watch. 